I love Arizona. There are so many specimens from here. Like, it is insane. I've been going to the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show for four years. It is the largest gem and mineral show in the world. It's just like every corner, every parking lot, every available open surface is like a mineral show. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's just not the case this year. Really sad that we don't get to go and see all the sites and the food and the people and of course all the minerals. Woohoo! We are in fact doing Arizona. Other than Tennessee, Arizona is my other favorite state. So usually in February, I'll take vacation either before or after the Tucson Gym and Mineral Show and go with my family and do like crazy insane excursions all over Arizona. So today guys, we are going to go on a whirlwind tour of Arizona. We have so many specimens. This is gonna be fun. Our first big location is the Red Cloud Wolf and I mine, it was operating prior to 1881. It is like the premier Wolf and I location in the United States and pretty much the world. The Wolf and I from here can be almost like a blood red color. It's beautiful. So here we have two examples, beautiful prismatic bladed crystals. This one, they're chunky. They're not quite like what you would think of as a normal wolf and I, still really cool. Because we have so many places that we are going to be going to today, we have actually printed a map. Holy cow, that is big. <laughs> These are rough approximations. Red Cloud Mines. It is in the lower portion of La Paz County. Next location. Watch out. Ooh, okay. So this is a candlestick, but their nickname is called a Sticking Tommy. As you can tell, it's got some sharp points to it. A candle and a wrapped up mystery specimen. This is one of the coolest places. So we are officially in Tombstone, predominantly known for the OK Corral shootout. It was not just a place where cowboys go hang out and visit ladies of the night. It was a thriving silver town and it is actually one of the coolest places I've gotten to visit. I've gotten to go into a mine, so it was called the Good Enough Mine. Part of what they talk about is actually the daily lives of the miners. Can we actually get the lights dimmed. Spooky. So the Good Enough Mine was operating in the late 1800s. The miners would be issued candles. Their burn rate would be enough for a single shift in the mine. If you guys can imagine, you're spending your entire eight to 12 hour day down in a dark hole where the only light that you have is a single candle. These would be stuck either into a crevice in the rock or into a piece of the wood. If you ran out of light before your shift ended, you actually were leaving the mine in complete and total darkness. Some of these mines went as deep as 400 feet. It's just really crazy to think that this is how tons of ore were mined all over Arizona back in the day. I'm a little afraid of catching on fire. So let's get the lights back up and let's look at some more mineral specimens. So there's not a ton of mineral specimens that come out of Tombstone. I'm really excited to have one here. This is fluorite on quartz. They're these beautiful octahedral fluorites that have this beautiful grape color. It's just extremely sculptural, it's really pretty. So we've got our Tombstone flag. You may see me just accidentally jab myself later. I feel like it's going to happen. I'm ready for another box. Oh, okay. So. This is actually one of my favorite specimens in the building. This is a piece of petrified wood with a very rare manganese oxide mineral on it called grautite. The grautite is these teeny tiny little black crystals that are kind of flickling all over it. Basically, you've got this cool, bubbly, petrified wood, and then you have those little crystals. And it is from the Blackwater Mine, a defunct uranium vanadium mine. This is a one-time find. A miner found a pocket of it. He mined the entire pocket, put all the pieces in a flat, apparently drove to California and sold the entire production to a mineral company in California, and that is it. So this is the only grautite on petrified wood in the world, which is really awesome. So that is from a 
patchy. All the way, kind of up in here. What is our next classic locality? Ooh I know a lot of people can probably tell me right off the bat what this is. This is actually my personal piece. I went to the petrified forest and drove around for a while there. Drove my mom slightly nuts. She is not nearly as into this as I am, but it was really cool, it was beautiful. We got to go see like the Crystal Bridge. We saw like, I think it was called like the long logs or something like that, which is really cool. They're these big giant logs. You can't collect this yourself. It's in a national park, illegal. So I bought this from the Rainbow Forest Museum gift shop. What I was looking for was a piece of petrified wood that had all of the classic colors and then had some detail of the actual wood to it. You can see that it's got some of the original bark texture on it. And then even in the bottom down here, you can tell that it actually still retains some of its rings. I always love that you can still see some of those original textures, even though it's all been replaced by quartz. I took a really long time to pick this out. Even as a little kid, I would do this to my parents, so I have not changed much. So it is kind of down in here. There we go. So we've got our next box here. So these are a bunch of more random minerals. This is a piece of pyrite. So he says Patagonia. So I have actually been to Patagonia. It's really close to the border. It is these absolutely beautiful mountains and you have a ton of just this beautiful grassland and lots of juniper trees and little scrubby oak trees. So this is sceptered amethyst. So these are little teeny tiny amethyst scepters and they're so cute. It's from the Washington Duquesne mining area. It was actually first started by Mexican miners and then later it was bought and used by American mining companies. This is a super fragile, super terrifying piece of wolfenite from the glove mine. You see a lot of mineral specimens come out of there. The way that the glove mine got its name is that a lot of the ore that they were mining actually went up in these finger-like shoots. They started noticing that it kind of looked like the fingers in a glove. And then we have some sericite from the flux mine. So this is a super famous mine. It produced tons and tons and tons of ore. This is actually a very, very classic example of the type of sericite that you get out of there. It's very fibrous. It's very fragile, like scary fragile. It is like these straw stacks of crystals. So it is actually a lead ore mineral and the old timey name for this guy is white lead. This would actually get ground up and made into like lead powders and then smelted and used in all sorts of industrial processes. And way back when people also used to make lead based powder that was white and smeared on their faces and it was unhealthy. <laughs> we are all the way down in Santa Cruz. I love Southern Arizona. It's just gorgeous. So many boxes. <laughs> So we have a Four Peaks Amethyst and a Wolfenite from Theba, Arizona. Theba, the mining area was discovered around 1900 and it only produced until about 1923, but it's another classic American locale. You'll see really gorgeous Wolfenites from here with these really big balls of mematite. So that's kind of what it's known for. Then we've got our Four Peaks Amethyst. So you guys can see how really pretty that color is. Four Peaks Amethyst is in the Mazatzal mountain range. I may have butchered that, but I tried. It's actually kind of an extreme mine. You actually have to take a nine mile hike to the mining location. There's no running water, no electricity. It's just you, whatever equipment you have and nature. They get enough material that they really can't like backpack it out. They actually use helicopters to take the material out from the mine. I don't know that many people that have actually taken helicopter rides, but this is taking a helicopter ride. So we're in Maricopa County. To give you guys an idea of how big Maricopa County is, it's bigger than four US states. Connecticut, okay. Rhode Island. Delaware. Delaware and Ohio. Ohio really? I don't know. Well, Hawaii. Woo. Okay. They're kind of all over the place. So we're just going to give a general Maricopa County. We said this is a marathon. So 
Thanks for sticking with us. One. So we have three specimens here. We have some linerite. They're a really pretty blue copper bearing mineral found all over the state, but this one is from around Prescott. Then we've got our calcite after globarite pseudomorph. So a pseudomorph is where one mineral will actually replace and keep the shape of a previous mineral. It's made out of calcite now, but it has the shape of a globarite. These are actually a very classic and pretty hard to find mineral specimen. You can see it's like a really cool doubly terminated crystal. So then we've got our opalized chalcedony. This actually comes out of Joshua Tree, Arizona. When I first saw this specimen, I was like, oh yeah, Joshua Tree, California. But apparently there are Joshua trees in Arizona and they're in Yavapai County. So let's do our pin in Yavapai. There we go. Okay, let's see what we have. We got turquoise. So if you guys notice, it's kind of got like this spider webbing pattern, which is really pretty. This would be from the Mineral Park mine. And then we've got some little hand carved leaves of Kingman turquoise. And these are all in Mojave County. So Mineral Park was actually the county seat for quite a while. Well then Kingman got to be this huge mine and was producing all this turquoise and it was making a lot of money. The county seat was proposed to move to Kingman. Well, the people of Mineral Park had a problem with that and they ended up basically taking all the paperwork and I guess like the government documents hostage. The townspeople of Kingman actually had to go and take them back. So it, <laughs> Like that just seems like all sorts of petty going on. <laughs> We're going to go right in the middle of my hobby. Can I have the next box? Alrighty. We are looking at the Christmas mine. This is a super, super fragile little guy. Like I better not sneeze in the presence of this mineral specimen. This is a mineral called calcotrichite. It is a cuprite mineral. So basically, you know how you can have like quartz variety amethyst? Well, this is cuprite variety calcotrichite. And the Greek words that were smashed together to become calcotrichite's name actually mean hairy copper. Every time I breathe on it, I can see it move. That's kind of scary. It looks like it would be soft, but it's really just super, super delicate. And Kina white. It just looks unreal. Like that blue color is crazy. So the Christmas mine kind of has, we're just gonna say that it was a little less than uh, on the up and up. Gold deposits were actually discovered in the area in the late 1800s, but the deposits were actually later found to be on the Native American reservation land. So it took an act of Congress from some powerful enough guys to actually get the boundary lines moved. So that's sketchy and not real nice. Some beautiful mineral specimens from a not so great story. Everybody. So Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> and the Christmas mine's located kind of in the south of the county. So we're gonna put it boop, right there. Oh, lots of boxes. Oh, those are big. <laughs> this is the Nadenite, which is the red mineral with calcite. And this is from the old Yuma mine. There is a Yuma County, but Old Yuma is actually not in Yuma County. It is close to one of the coolest places on earth, the Saguaro National Park. It's really pretty, it's really cool. We always try to go there really early in the morning because there are animals there are actually more active. We've been able to see deer. I'm pretty sure we saw a coyote. And one of my favorite little animals is the Gamble's quail. So we talk about so much copper in Arizona. And this is our obligatory copper nugget. And this is from Ajo. What's really neat about Ajo is that you actually get these really chunky crystals. So this is technically crystalline. And then we've got Chrysocolla and a little bit of azurite. It's from Helvetia. The bottom down here is actually made out of malachite. And then you have right here in this seam, a whole bunch of that really dark colored Chrysocolla. Kind of looks like a weird sandwich. Kind of smells like an old book. This would be more indicative of what you'd be mining, what they would be looking for to basically grind up and extract the metals out of. They're all copper bearing minerals in here. That's that beautiful blue green color. 
another copper bearing mineral. This is an azurite with malachite from Silver Hill Mine. So even though it was called the Silver Hill Mine, it produced only like three and a half ounces of silver per ton, which seems kind of low to be called like a silver hill. This is a piece of selenite with copper crystals inside of it. So that is like hair wires of copper. There's not many places in the world that you see something like this going on. This piece is from the Mission Mine. The Mission Mine that is actually still in operation. So this was Pima. Both of these specimens are Andradite Garnet from the Quartzite Mine near Stanley Butte. Their claim to fame is that they were used for abrasives, like sandpaper basically. But these crystals are actually pretty decently sized. This one has some really awesome luster to it. It's really shiny. We're gonna put our pin in Graham County. All righty, okay, lots of green. So broken tight is really related to malachite. They're extremely similar. Then we have some really beautiful chalcedony. It's almost got like this green rim in it, which makes this cloudy chalcedony around the outside appear kind of green. And then you have just this absolutely gorgeous quartz in the middle. And then we have dioptase. So our broken tight and our dioptase are actually from the Morinci mine. And it's an extremely famous mine, still in operation. One of the largest copper deposits and operating copper mines in the world. It is huge. Another one of those rare instances where we still have an operating mine that is also producing mineral specimens at the same time. We are in Greenlee County, somewhere in there. All right, we got a big box. So we have three pieces from Ray Mine. So to give you guys an idea of just the insanity of this mine, it covers like almost 3,500 acres and their daily production is 250,000 tons of ore per day. That's ridiculous. Like what, what is that? I love this piece. You have these little bunny ears of copper, and then you actually have some really beautiful crystalline cuprite underneath it. Cuprite is actually a copper bearing mineral. It gets its color from copper. Then we have a repeat of our hairy copper ore. I love getting to see these in like fiber specimens are just really different. And then lastly, we've got our gem silica. And what I'm referring to as gem silica is not the quartz crystals that are right here, it's this blue. So gem silica is actually chalcedony colored by chrysocolla. The Raymond is actually extremely, extremely famous for having these really beautiful gem silica stalactites. They're just known for this like insanely blue color. It makes me think of blueberry or blue raspberry candy. And again, colored by copper. So we are going to put our pin in Pinal. So let's see what is in our second to last group of boxes. We are actually back in Gila County. This is Sleeping Beauty turquoise. It's really beautiful. It's known for that pretty robin's egg blue color and it's usually a very solid color rather than having like spider webbing or veining. So one of my friends actually mined these and let me borrow them. These are from Parado Mesa, and this is the premier location for North American Parado. And then you might be wondering why we have this in a box. We're gonna leave it in the box because I don't like to handle it a whole lot. This is chrysotile, or as some people might actually know it, asbestos. Asbestos is an awesome fire retardant material. It's extremely durable. People used to use it to make fireproof suits for firefighters and before we actually knew some of the adverse health effects. So this piece comes from the Salt River Canyon and it's actually a really great example of how like truly fibrous chrysotile can be. When I first came to work at JTV, we cataloged these as two separate pieces and later I actually found out they were supposed to be one. So at some point in their lives, they ended up broken, which is really unfortunate. Quartz is this sparkly white in the middle. You have some malachite right here that's fuzzy and fibrous. And then you've got a tiny bit of chrysocolla. These are from Globe, Arizona. It is actually a really famous mining town. So it was named after a pretty decently sized silver nugget that looked like a sphere. 
This, on the other hand, is a little bit of vanadinite, colored red by vanadium. Got a really cute hexagonal crystal structure. This is from the Apache mine, which is in the Globe Hills. So I think Globe should be somewhere in here. So we've got one box left, but we actually have two counties that we haven't covered. We don't have any mineral specimens from Yuma, unfortunately, but What's funny is Red Cloud Mine with those beautiful wolfenites actually used to be located in Yuma County. The county lines were moved and Red Cloud became part of La Paz. So I guess you could technically say you've seen specimens from Yuma now. And then we've got one of the biggest counties, which is Coconino. And Coconino contains the Grand Canyon. I can't really tell you what the exact reason is that there's not as much mining done in those areas. I do know that if you look at the Grand Canyon and a lot of the rocks and things in those areas, like you actually see a lot more like limestone, mudstone. A lot of it is actually not as tectonically deformed. So there's not as much chemical and physical alteration of the sediments. Whereas when you get down in here and you start looking at like what creates wolfenite, what creates vanadinite, what creates fluorite, there's all sorts of volcanism going on. There's tectonism going on. Kind of gets a little calmer up in here all around the Grand Canyon. So we've got our last area. I'll tell you guys right now, this is one of my favorite pieces in the entire collection. It is from Bisbee. So Bisbee is an extremely, extremely, extremely famous mine in Southern Arizona. It is probably more famous for its azurite and malachite. You got this very fine bladed, I wanna call them poof balls. They're just really teeny tiny fuzzies of malachite. And then you have these gorgeous sparkly azurite crystals on top of that. And then we have some fibrous malachite. If you guys can see in the light when you move those, it almost looks chatoyant. When they are polished, they're really pretty and they get this lovely like movement across the surface of the gemstone. This is actually a ragonite. And these kind of formations where you have like the spikiness on top and kind of the bubbliness on the bottom are indicative of a Bisbee ragonite. So the Bisbee mining area and proved to be like one of the most mineral rich mines in the world back in its heyday. It produced three million ounces of gold and some eight billion pounds of copper. I mean that, like, <laughs> this piece is actually what we would call a historic artifact. This is a real piece of wood that was a mine shaft beam. Just to tell you guys how rich this area was with copper. The water had so much copper in it that over time it would actually leach into the wood that was supporting the mine and deposit the copper in between the grain in the wood. So you guys can kind of see it's like poking out from in between the layers in the wood. And then you have where on the back here, this is actually copper holding a bunch of rock together. So essentially the copper solidified all of this together. So before we go, let's just take a closer look at this awesome piece of Bisbee history. Bisbee on our map. It's actually just south of Tombstone. That was a whirlwind adventure of Arizona. I was really glad that I got to do this video with you guys. Comment below what you guys think we should talk about next or where we should go next. Like, subscribe, ring that bell so you don't miss any more of our awesome videos, and I will see you guys next time. <laughs>